So when did you guys uh, start this project? Okay, so um, I think we first started during the pandemic. Um, like me and um, uh, Alma, the, one of the, the guitarists and like backups vocalist, I guess. Um, we met through TikTok. <laughs> Uh, like I think it should be 2020 uh, around the summer of 2020 um I um, saw one of uh, Alma's uh, TikToks and I was like oh um because I knew about Alma's previous band 44 caliber love letter um and I was like oh 44 caliber love letter on my uh, for you page that's quite nice and so we started talking, uh, we realized we've gone to a lot of the same shows. And one day I was like kind of bored and just said, hey, Alma, do you want to start a screamo band? And she immediately said yes, because obviously like she doesn't say no if you want to start a band. She has like six projects going on right now. Uh, I think she's actually away uh, preparing to DJ for tonight. Um, she just does a lot of stuff, uh, and so we met. Uh, so we met in um, we met up just the two of us in my bedroom, um, my student apartment at the time, and just wrote a couple of riffs. And like we asked around, we didn't really um, know any drummers that like wanted to, um, and so it kind of took the back seat for a while. Like we saw each other once every month, every every two months maybe, uh, and while we were like passively looking for uh, bandmates, so Kim here, uh, I met because uh, she went to one of my shows with my uh, then uh, I played no bass in a noise rock band back then as well, Idiot Child. Um, so she went uh, because we had mutual friends and mutual band uh, with one of my bandmates. Um, and so we started talking and like, oh, would you like to join this uh, project I'm working on? Um, because I also knew of her previous band, uh, Anhedoni. Um, and I sent her a couple of like, uh, me and Alma put together a list of uh, just influences and like what we thought we wanted to sound like, which mm. is funny because we sound nothing like that right now. Yeah, exactly. It was mostly like Midwestern emo and things like this from what I can remember. And some screamo also, yeah. Yeah. We just wanted to sound like very melancholic, kind of aggressive um screamo i think let me actually get the list i have it quite readily on hand so we um uh the list was like uh another swedish screamo band did i for the bigger standard um it's i wrote haikus about cannibalism in your yearbook i hate sex spirit of versailles and the truth about dreaming um, so it, it's kind of, hey, Nico. Um, so we're just talking about how the band got started. So it, it's kind of like old school screamo, uh, but the more melancholic, more melodic kind. Um, and so I got Kim's number and we texted and uh, she said that she was down. Um, and then the next year, uh, like, so it's now uh, summer of 2021 and um, uh, our local like DIY venue, Ian Schiftet, had um, a couple of like pub nights where we just 
hung around and had like a couple of beers uh and through that i met uh nico um which was kind of funny because i was like i didn't know him at the time and so i was started i was talking to a friend and like oh yeah um uh, and somehow we got on the topic that um uh about like suture um his band uh, which is like very noisy power violence and like oh yeah he he drums i i know uh my friend said um and so i asked him like oh are you nico are you the drummer of suture and he said no i just make noise and then we got got started talking um and he said oh yeah i just i want to and i said oh i want to make like a scream band would you be interested oh and he said like oh yeah uh like blast beats, uh, I I know. How do you translate this? I know word for word what you said. You said a stadig and and stadig två takt. A sturdy two beat. <laughs> yeah, like uh, uh, yeah, just a sturdy blast beat two beat, I guess. Because <laughs> <laughs> uh, I come from a punk background. Uh, you said that. Uh... Well, you ended up sounding quite different than you than you originally wanted to. So, how did all this kind of then translate to uh, Lily of the Valley or Lily of the Valley? So, it, it it's like three of the first five songs that we made. Um, uh, so, Brevo Sor, um, which is letters and wounds, um, was like the first first like even first riff idea that Alma had. Um, and so we just added upon that. And I think that's why that's the most like typically screamo songs out of out of them, because it, it's just very straightforward because we like didn't knew, know each other as musicians back then. But as we started um, like getting to know each other and like all of the different uh paths we have taken as musicians we just kind of like started trying to do what was natural for us as musicians and then make it screamo instead of having screamo be the primary goal w- would you guys agree yeah definitely and i think also one one uh, one bit that has participated in like developing our sound and everything i think would be uh also because i had a condition the the first time we talked about starting a group i had a, i had two conditions i said i don't want to make any music in english <laughs> because i love swedish music uh, or music in swedish to like uh, cultivate like that kind of thing and i was always been very pro this and um uh, that I can be, that we can be become very technical on guitars and everything, and I think, uh, yeah. Uh. Yeah, your second condition was that we should like never use straight four four beats. Yeah, just odd odd stuff, uh, rhythms and yeah, such. <laughs> yeah, this is, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so jazz, jazz emo. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah, this this has been out. <laughs> so, so a lot of our unreleased songs are a lot weirder than Lilia Con Valley. Yeah, definitely. So how do you write music as a band or where do you draw inspiration? The burden, so to speak, is split on me, uh, Alma and Kim. Um, like I, I um, oftentimes when I'm like alone, uh, at home, I'm just like trying to find pretty chords and um, trying to write something. So I'll um, I'll record that just with my phone or like in Logic and bring it uh, up on our next brand practice. Uh, and Alma, she's just like a riff machine. Uh, <laughs> she she can come up like with a great idea just very very spontaneously but she always brings something new also yeah. like to all the rehearsals we do she always has like something new that she wants to d- develop also it's actually very incredible um 
and I've said this before, it's like you come to band rehearsal with like just a tiny sliver of an idea and then together with everyone like iterating upon it and reiterating upon it, it just becomes like incredible. Uh, like the entirety of um, what what's it called? Och min kropp blev tirak, which means and my body turned into smoke. Um, the last track of uh, Lilje Kumvali. I I wrote most of that um, it, in logic during like an afternoon, an evening, um, in just like a straight five hour marathon session. And I was I was incredibly happy with that. So uh, when I came to band practice with this song, um, I, I kind of felt like, I don't know, close to offended when someone, some thing changed, like Alma changed how she um, uh, played the melody and we decided, because the last part of that song was um, upbeat uh, and not uh, like half tempo like it is now. So I was like, uh, does this work? And like, obviously it does because that song is a fucking banger. Uh, <laughs> so it's just putting a lot of trust in your bandmates and um, trusting that they will make it uh, good. I, something I think I think is incredible with this band is like that we have a very good cooperation and... Uh that we can always, everyone's always very much involved in like the, <clears throat> the, the, the process. Everyone can just bring a tiny section of an idea and everyone is like, okay, but we should try this. Maybe we could do this in, in, uh, in three tempo or whatever. And, uh, or maybe I could just change this riff and, uh, do it half tempo and we go without drums or whatever. So it's, it's, in the process, the creative making is always feels to me very spontaneous and uh, very participatory. Yeah, it, it, there's no like uh, the barrier to express an idea of how you'd like to change it is very like low, and we're very open about that. So a lot of the times we have an idea of how it how the song we're currently making should sound, and then it just doesn't work out, and then we say. Yeah. No, not not it. That was not it. And then we move on. So I think that is also like a big part of like trusting each other, seeing things out, and then evaluating it. Definitely. Yeah, I think we yeah explore a lot of ideas, and I, I guess we also try to use a lot of parts that we agree on when jamming the ideas as well which also makes this weird structure of the newer songs, at least, uh, which I really like about this band. Yeah, what kind of... Uh, have you set some goals for yourself with this band, so some dreams? Yeah, for me, because I'm uh, I'm going away uh, to Australia for a year to, uh, to follow my wife. She's doing uh, work in uh, ornithology, uh, her PhD. So my main goal is just like to finish up the uh, the songs that we have and polish them greatly and uh, yeah, release a new album before I go. <laughs> that, or, or at least like record a new album. Before. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, record. Maybe not release, but at least record. Yeah. And uh, and that's uh, within a few months already. So. Uh, what kind of music will be on that record? Once I remember Alma, she came up with a a name for our, our the the genre that we are playing, like emotional, oh. blah 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 blah. It was super long. <laughs> I can't recall it. Yeah, I, I mean we we've strayed like very far from um like the classic screamo roots that we agreed upon. Mm. But it's still screamo, I would say. Yeah, it's still yeah. it's still screamo, but it, it's like, but it's not um, like evolution upon screamo um, like uh, most fifth wave uh, emo is today. Like, it, 
because fifth wave emo it raised a lot upon like the midwest uh riffs and like electronic compositions and um all that kind of stuff uh we try to bring in more like jazz influences and uh what one song we recently wrote had um classical influences uh like by um Maurice Ravel yeah um it's just it's very difficult to put a genre on something when it's just like four very different musicians trying to synthesize something yeah I I, re I really mean that we have everyone has very different musical backgrounds and preferences and we're just trying to get along and in, inter interwave everything you know um yeah you said it's still screamo so uh what is the meaning of screamo to you all i always define it when i'm trying to explain it to someone as like you know how punk uh is driven primarily by anger um like that you can hear that you're angry and you can hear that you're angry on their instruments and like the entire genre started from a place to uh, express that anger i think screamo has the same thing but for me it's a lot more about catharsis like building up um having uh, loud and soft dynamics and then like just getting to scream uh, what you're feeling because it feels good to like release that those kinds of emotions mm -hmm. yeah there's always like a like a kind of a struggle uh like a contradiction in the music like between the the softer sides and the more harder sides uh i would say and this um this this i think is also something that we have much in our music also and which is essential to the the genre of screamo i would say also mm. yeah to me it's still it's still punk but more i don't know human i guess because it's not so one-sided in the yeah in the in the themes i guess okay then what kind of experience is uh of said and trunk concert the best kind of shows for me as like the lead vocalist are the times I'm feeling like so energized that that like I, I'm and I'm just like so very into expressing my emotions at the moment that I just let like let it out really just go wild like scream without the mic and, and like screaming during my actual quiet parts because I just like want to let it out um that those are the best kinds of shows uh for me i want to answer this also and the best kind of shows for me is like because i've always heard that i have very much when i'm having a good time on stage i'm always having much eye contact with a with a crowd and and um and i'm always laughing i'm always smiling very much and uh I don't know the the feeling I'm having on a good gig is like okay we're doing this together and I'm I'm trying to to express something that is proper to me but that you also know uh, and we try to orientate ourselves within this music that we're playing and uh, and I, I I can really feel like a good contact with the crowd that's that's like the most principal thing and uh, I don't know that re it really touches my heart and uh, it makes me it renders me able to express myself and all of this yeah live, live the crowd is, is always nice and I, I always feel kind of anxious and just want to get through the gig so I'm not sure uh, <laughs> But uh, yeah, I, I really like what Kim said because uh, I've been noticing that as well when we when we've been playing live, and and that's the fun part. Like the the energy between us as members is just so varied when we play. Okay. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah.